want to share with you what we saw and what we heard in observing thousands of companies and going into the insides of all size organizations. And you can throw most companies into a normalized distribution curve. Normalized distribution where you would have high performers up here, so high performing teams. You have low performing teams over here, and then there's a whole large group right in the middle. And if you want to apply an 80-20 rule, it's 80-20 applied twice. So the top high performers tend to be approximately 4% of the firm, and the, the real bottom, bottom low is 4%. The majority in the middle is like 92% of your organization. And these are teams. So when you think about teams, you will have one high performer maybe in here, but generally, rarely will you find a team concentrated of high performers and then have a low performing team. They go directly hand in hand. High concentration of high performers equals a high team and so forth. So one of the common mistakes that we have seen leaders of organizations try to do is that you have your high performers, right? And you wanna go and almost every leader we talked to, the first instinct was, can I find a way to get the mid and low performing teams to produce just at 50% of the high? Right? That, that was a huge feat. You acknowledge they will not produce the same level as the high, but if I can get 50% of the high by these guys, the entire organization will do better. We found that's the wrong way to look at it. It's absolutely the wrong way to look at it. Because you know the phrase, the squeaky wheel gets all the attention, gets all the oil. This is oftentimes a maddening exercise of trying to increase their performance to increase your overall enterprise or company performance. Instead, where you need to start is up here. And the belief is that they're performing at optimal levels, right? They're so good, how could you possibly do anything except just try to learn lessons from them and take whatever they have and just try to carbon copy it downstream? What we found instead was this. You can get high-performing teams to perform 10 to 20 times higher than they currently are. And that is an easier, higher ROI task, higher return on investment than trying to get these to perform better first. Eventually, you want to increase the performance across the board or else you will not get the full value of your entire enterprise. But first and foremost, this word 10X, you're gonna see the word 10X mentioned quite a bit on this calendar. 10X as an individual, 10X as a team, Getting high-performing teams to produce 10 times higher is the first objective. Now, what's interesting and some of the common mistakes that occurs in looking at high-performing teams is this. These are two of the common mistakes that occurs when studying high-performing teams. They're performing most programs they run, most rituals in the company processes at level 10. They have evolved. They started with something, whether it's hiring, whether it's training, whether it's coaching, mentoring, they started and they evolved so much. They're running level 10. And when you take level 10 and you try to apply it downstream, it fails. It does not work. The other thing you'll find is they're running 70 plus programs. And if you don't like the word programs, think about rituals, processes. They're running over 70 of them. They're so intertwined. If you talk to them, they will basically let you know you can't run one without the other. You need all of them. And this is the common mistake of trying to take this and apply it down. You're applying too much and you're running something that is far. You need to ramp up from level one, level two. What you need to figure out is what is level one, what is level two, and what are the top one to two programs? This is the knowledge you have to extract. And what's fascinating is even they forget what that was. They lose objectivity. And oftentimes, you need the help of someone not inside your team, not inside your organization, to help you figure out what that was. And the reason why they can go 10x is that what ends up happening is everything occurred organically. They kind of bobbed and weaved and tacked and got here. But if they're able to turn organic into something deliberate, even the action, although they're running at level 10, 
the minute they recognize what level one is, it will inject a new level, a nuanced detail into what they're doing that increases performance higher than you think. When you see high performing teams, the change they end up making is the tiniest change. It's a one to 2% change, but the outcome is 50, 100, 200, 300% return. This notion of turning something or organically that was figured out, going deliberate, is something that is critically important to increase their performance. Sorry. And then one of the interesting insights that we got, so Studi, who's speaking later, is one of the top students coming out of the Harvard Education School. Do a lot of work with the Harvard Education School. And I love some of what showed up in research. When you look at organisms, so anything organic, if you want to make change, successful change, you need to preserve 98% of the original DNA. You can only change 2% at a time. Remember, it's at a time. Once something gets ritualized into an individual, you can do the next 2%. When you try to change too much, and I know there's some of you here you know, who love to go to conferences, who love to go and learn new things, and you come back to your organization, oh my God, I figured out the next best thing, right? So I have program number 78, 79, let's go to 120, and you're applying constantly, and you wonder over time why the results don't show up. Now, high-performing organizations, you'll see, can generally just do more. When you meet these teams, they tend to have more energy. They tend to sort of have resources. Exact same headcount, you go here, no energy, and there's constant resource issues. There's a difference. You'll see. You can feel just walking in. But you have to recognize, if you want to actually upgrade your organization at the highest of levels in a focused manner as opposed to diffused efforts, if you want to help groups down here, and this is the test, by the way. This low-performing group is the litmus test. We always say pr the words proof is in the adoption. When we run our academies, what ends up happening, I mean, you can be the judge of it by the end of it. The common words we hear is life-changing, and, you know, this is amazing. And, you know, we sort of joke around. It was a comment Megan had made that most conferences, most off-sites are not life-changing. They're week changing at best, maybe two, three weeks. If you think of all the great books you have read, all the great talks you have watched and the great conferences you went to and what you learned and you audit the true impact of it six months out, a year out, two years out, you'll see it's mostly zero. Nothing changed. Nothing changed and none of us have enough time to change nothing, to go spend time three full days taking away nothing. And proof is in the adoption we have seen incredible change of people just coming to a three-day academy, but the change is smaller than you think. When you try to change too much, you will fail. And one of the common phrases that we hear people say, you know, the whole nothing ventured, nothing gained, try something. So this is the big wake-up call we always remind people. Um, every attempt, that's fine, right? Every attempt increases the cost of your next attempt. If you have children, I mean, you probably see this really clearly. The reason why most of us can't parent our own children, but can seem to parent other people's children so easily is because we haven't tried to parent other people's children yet. If you do, you'll see that the first attempt might seem good, but as it doesn't work, and I say attempt, of course, it's failed attempts. When things don't create the return, the high ROI, you ever try to go on a diet, right? And someone gives you diet advice. If you've never been on a diet, you'd be like, I'm gonna try that right away, right? Well, guess what? It's difficult, it's not working. And so next time someone says, I have some diet advice for you, Charlie. I'm like, I don't wanna hear it. Or, or my questions, my diligence questions are much longer. Have you tried it? How long does it work? I mean, like the skepticism rises. And if you aren't seeing this in your organization, Everyone, you come with great ideas. Everything you try, every 2%, every 5, 10, 20% of things you attempt, when it doesn't pay off, as an enterprise, as a team, you will feel disillusionment. They may not tell you to your face, but they aren't going to do it. Because it's what we call silent protests. 
Organizations are filled with silent protesters. 